previously on Ultimate F1 Career. So here we come round the final corner then. What sort of time is it going to be? It's not going to be good enough to get through. It's a 34 0, which is slowest of everybody. Lights out, away we go. And yeah, the car's not making much of a good start there. And you can see how far behind already. We are, oh, that is a, a big pile up in turn one. We'll settle for it though. <laughs> hey, up to 12th. Is it going to be our fastest lap? Not quite. 32 9, but 16th in the end. Hello, how's it going? Welcome back to some more F1 2009 and another part of our ultimate F1 career mode. Today we are back and we are ready and raring to go with two Grand Prix. Uh, there was a comment in the last video um, and I thought, you know what, that, that makes sense. Since we're only doing five lap races, it sort of makes sense that we're, we're going to do two races an episode. It allows us to get through this F1 season nice and quickly um, and then head on into the next one. But uh, today we've got the Spanish Grand Prix before we take on the Monaco Grand Prix after that. Uh, looking forward to it. Hopefully you guys are too. So let's get into the next session and uh, we'll head straight into qualifying. But thank you for all of the support so far i really do appreciate it it's uh it's been amazing so thank you so much um but yeah looking forward to seeing how we uh, how we get going here in spain it's uh it is uh an interesting track i think it's the uh the old style so so what, what it is now in 2023 i believe or 2024. Is leaving his garage. But uh, let's see. We'll advance the time forward. Alonso is going out. Let's see how we get on here. We'll have to remember to use our curves because we have been forgetting to do that, particularly on our first run. Little dab of curves there on the straight. There's lots of Heavy braking zones here and high speed corners, particularly turn three here. Can we keep it flat? Easily, easily flat through there. Very nice. And we're just. Oh dear. Onto the grass. I was too busy having a look at the fact that we were two and a half tenths off. Off the uh, leader Jensen button in that first sector. But yeah, had a challenging time in Bahrain last time out. Hopefully, expecting a, a better race here. Come through the middle sector now. Three seconds, but yeah, we've got uh, this going. Obviously, now we go through the. The big hairpin in F1. Oh, it is the chicane. I was about to fly into that uh, final corner there. But now we've got the chicane, so now we know that the chicane is, is here. We can adjust accordingly. So 128.4. Robert Kubica has gone ahead of us. Nelson Piquet is slower than us, though. Button is in P1. Weber has posted a quicker lap. Oh, <laughs> that Williams that we gave a little love tap to. Went into the wall. Oh dear, a little bit of corner cutting there, but wasn't the worst to actually lost time. I think. Let's see what we manage in this middle sector. Yeah, 1.7 seconds off the pace, much better than what we managed through there the last time. So I think there's uh, quite a bit of potential here. 
in this car. Well, we head down the inside of that Renault. And now here we go then into the final corner. And we head up to the line. What's it going to be? It's a 126.5. Which is enough for 14th at the moment. 3.2 seconds off the pace. Let's see how our third qualifying lap goes. Here we come then round the final corner. It's a good lap this. This should be into the top 10 I would imagine. It's going to be in the 24s. It's a 124.3 which puts us 5th for now. I think that will be more than enough to get through to Q2 for the first time since Australia. Let's advance the time forward a little bit. P6 now. But I think we're going to be fine. P8 in the end. Oh, P9. Very good. Right. Uh, Sebastian Buemi, Bordet, Nagajima, Piquet and Sutil all out in Q1. And we out qualify our teammate once again, which is uh, what we like to see. So let's head into qualifying session two and see how we get on there. Well, up to the line we go at 123.8. That is a brilliant time in Q2. That is surely going to see us through into Q3 then. I think there's more to come. So this is our best performance since Australia. But uh, that should be us through. Let's have a look as we end the session. Fifth place. Brilliant. The following drivers are out of qualifying and will take grid positions 15 to 11. Heidfeld, Kovalainen, Kubica, Glock, Alonso. Well, we knock out Fernando Alonso, home favourite. The final qualifying session to determine grid positions 1 to 10. That's the end of the session. Let's get in with then. Q3 is on the way. Well, look at this. Through the first two sectors, we're four tenths up on Mark Webber, who's currently quickest. Let's see where we end up by the end of this. We could end up with our first pole position here. We have been fast, and this lap has been particularly good. Let's see how we do as we come out of the final corner now and head up to the line. What's it going to be? It's in the 123s. It's the 122.9, actually. Wow, that is going to be pole position, I think, for the Spanish Grand Prix. And a potential podium on the line here. There it is then. You're in pole position for tomorrow's race. Well done. Pole position. Two to ten will be taken by Weber, Bottom, Vettel, Barrichello, Rosberg, Trolley, Hamilton, Massa, Raikkonen. Well, unbelievable taking pole position for the Spanish Grand Prix. So there we have it then, we're starting on pole position, we're ready for the lights then, here we go. Lights out and away we go here in Spain and well what a start for Mark Webber off the line and uh, also Sebastian Vell, the two Red Bulls making the best of the start but we have better straight line speed as we head into turn one, we dab on the brakes but it's Mark Webber. Who leads out of turn one? We are P in P2 at the moment, trying to follow and stay with him. Three. 
behind us we've got Sebastian Vettel we've got the two Braun GP cars I think we've got the McLaren of Lewis Hamilton up here as well a little bit of corner cutting there but that's not too bad we're starting on the uh, on the soft tyres as well let's see what we can do and Sebastian Buemi has already retired we have break ourselves a little bit there and Sebastian Vettel makes contact oh dear we're getting all nervous now there's a possibility of a podium here let's not throw it away I don't think we're going to win this race now that Weber is or well, has broken the, the slipstream a little bit occurs out of the final corner we seem to have a hell of a lot of speed out of that final corner and maybe that's why we managed to get pole position yesterday so here we go then into turn one little dab on the brakes we've got six laps in this race pitting after three pit stop Mark Webber is coming in as well we went into the back of him there but here we go we are all oh thank the lord it's just a black and white flag I wasn't in control of that but we're okay there goes uh, Mark Webber into the pit lane and we're in now putting on our hard tyres it was a good first stint need to be let back out there come on Looks like uh, quite a few guys have stolen a march on us there. Not really sure how. I think maybe even Hamilton did. Unless they had a drive through penalty, of course, which they might have done. Yeah, we've lost three seconds on Mark Webber. We were two and a half seconds behind going into the pit stop, so we're going to have to really drive well if we are to get back into the podium places. Ah, we've gone wide there. That's going to be Button's chance, is it? Well, maybe not. No, he's still just behind us. Lost 1.4 seconds in that sector. Well, here we come then, past the pit lane. Let's see, we're up to third, Vettel is in front of us, there is Sebastian Vettel going into turn one, are we going to be able to take him here and get second place back, I think Mark Webber has got the victory in the bag here. on cold tyres might be able to slipstream him on the main straight going into the final lap he went a little wide there we're putting him under good pressure here You're on here we go then oh that's uh, a little bit wide there from Sebastian Vell this is a great chance this is a great chance we're right on the back of him. Are we going to be able to slipstream him just like we did in China with a load of cars? And he has gone wide again. We've put him under severe pressure here. Oh, he makes a little bit of contact. Kurz, here we go. Kurz again. And we are through. And up into second place in this Spanish Grand Prix 
That is an excellent manoeuvre, and just like Giancarlo Fisichella did in 2009, it looks like we are going to finish in second place in a Grand Prix and get Force India's first podium, but we've gone wide. No! We spoke way too soon. That's the first time we've done that all weekend. Just trying to gain a little bit of time and try and break the slipstream to Sebastian Vettel. And in doing that, we have lost the podium place. What a shame. Are we going to be able to catch Button by the end of the race? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that's it for us. Unfortunately. But we are going to finish in fourth place, which is a terrific result. All things considered. And Rosberg's going to come in P5 behind us. But here we come then, up to the line. We are going to finish in fourth place. Decent result. Well, no Barrichello in the points. That's a big shock. Barrichello down in 17th in the end. So championship leader not scoring this weekend. And, uh, well, Mark Webber takes victory ahead of Sebastian Vettel in P2. Jensen Button finishes in P3. We finish P4 ahead of Rosberg P5. Then Raikkonen, Massa and Fernando Alonso rounding out the top eight. Into the championship then. Barrichello is uh, in 30 on 36 points he's six points ahead of mark weber sebastian vettel uh, just three points behind him and button uh, and rosberg also in the championship battle we move back up to 11th place in the championship now on seven points into the constructors force india move up to sixth ahead of toyota and bmw sauber uh, we're not too far behind mclaren but uh, definitely not really in that race um, for top five positions but sixth would be awesome by the end of the year but there you have it then that's the spanish grand prix that was exciting enough now we have got the monaco grand prix to come next that is oh, it's going to be very tough isn't it <laughs> I, I can't imagine how tough it's going to be in this game but we're going to give it our all so let's get ourselves into qualifying then here in monte carlo we know that it is going to be um, very, very tricky. We know that we're going to have to be at our absolute best to compete here. Let's see. Uh, let's see how it goes. This is the first qualifying session. The 15 fastest drivers will go through to Q2. The final five will make up grid slots 20 through to 16. Over Alonso. Over yeah, we're leaving it till late. So we're looking for a, about a 120. But avoiding the barriers is going to be pretty impressive in these drifty cars. Mm. Well, we hit the barrier <laughs> within five seconds of starting through Casino, we go. Well, look at that, second quicker than Mark Webber. Could we have a second consecutive pole position coming here? Who knows? Maybe we're risking it a hell of a lot more than the AI are. Oop. A mm, little bit of damage to the front wing. It's not what you want to see. Through the tunnel we go. Whoa. I think that's going to be a disallowed lap, is it? Yeah. And just lost uh, the back end because of the damage to the front wing, so going to have to be careful here. Wow, two and a half seconds off. Anyway, here we go. I feel like, ooh, there's going to be a few retirements. The, the handling model is awful. Right, anyway.
Oh, Toro Rosso came out right in front of us there. Dear me. Right. We just absolutely cannot hit the barrier here. Wow, that's a second and a half slower than what we managed on the last lap. See what we manage here as we come out of the tunnel this time. Much better run through there. Now coming up towards ooh, towards the swimming pool. Nearly went into the wall there. That's going to be a red. Yeah. Uh, right. If I press restart lap, will it? Yes, it has. It has fixed my front wing. Probably a bit of an exploit, but... Do I care? No, I don't. <laughs> no, I do not. Right. Front wing fixed. Let's see what we're made of through this first sector. There you go, 1.2 seconds quicker than Mark Webber in that first sector struggling in Mirabel and now coming up towards the tunnel I love how it goes a little bit louder as you're driving through here wow that was a very very good corner and now into the swimming pool. A bit too much there. We're still faster than Mark Webber by three tenths of a second. Let's see where we end up here as we go through Raskas into Anthony Knoll. And now all the way up to the finish line. And it's a 1.19.5, which is uh, enough for P3. We'll settle for that, right. Goodness me, that was tough. In these cars, that was very, very tough. Time's up. Only drivers currently on a flying lap can still post a qualification. Okay, so going out in Q1 then, Bourdain, Nagajima, Buemi, Suttil and Nelson Piquet. Okay, Q2 is here. Oh, we hit the barrier on the final corner. What are we going to manage as we head up to the line? It's enough for eight. Is that going to be enough? It is in ninth. P9 will settle for that. Well, going out in Q2 then. Alonso, Kovalainen, Raikkonen, Heidfeld and Kubica. Here we go then into Raskas for the final time. We will get one more flying lap out of this. But we've hit our front wing and we're going to head up to the line. What's it going to be? It's an 18-7. It's another pole position, I think. Wow. Well, we pulled out a load of time in that final sector there. That was brilliant. And I am very excited to find out what's going to happen in the race tomorrow we can see already improving on sector one it wasn't even our best possible lap but it's going to be two pole positions today by the looks of it now obviously our race pace is considerably worse but around monaco it shouldn't matter really but let's see if anybody can beat our time as they head Past the checkered flag, but this is a this is a decent lap, you know. There's no pressure on this lap, which is probably why we're doing so well. We hit the barrier again there, but it's like dodgems. <laughs> Dear me, yeah, rear wing's not feeling good either. Let's 
And there we go, Kurz. Up to the line. Is it going to be any better? Not this time. It's a 120.0. But it's going to be enough for pole position. Absolutely brilliant. Very good. Right, uh, let's get ourselves into the race then. Of course, uh, won by Mr. Jensen Button. And uh, I remember when he, he, he finished the race, he pulled into the uh, the pits at the end of it uh, rather than um, up to the start-finish line. And he had a run down the pit straight <laughs> towards the podium. Absolutely classic moment, but... Uh, yeah, should be a should be a crack at this. I think Fisichella finished ninth in this race and very, very nearly got Force India a point. The narrow winding streets mean overtaking opportunities are few and far between. You'll need to drive hard and maintain your concentration to stand a chance of finishing in the points. So here we go. Then we are ready for the lights and two races in a row don't get used to this folks we're on pole position lights out and away we go here in monaco jensen button is surely going to get us into turn one is he well we don't lose a place at the start what do you know we lead out of turn one and now we can try and build a gap here but we know fine well that we're probably going to make multiple uh, parts of contact with the with the barrier but as long as we stay out of trouble we should be able to finish ahead of Button and Barrichello here and we might be able to pick up Force India's first ever victory let's find out Well, on the lap three of this Grand Prix, and we are dominating it at the moment. We are a few seconds ahead of Jensen Button in second place. A few of the guys have come in for their pit stop. We normally struggle on our in laps, so it's good that we're in the lead. And we're not following anybody in, like in Spain. But we have a genuine chance of winning this. Yeah, definitely driving very well. Just struggling through a particular part of the track through Raskas and now into the pits we go but listen to all the oh I think there's been a crash I think Button has crashed and he's holding everybody up at Raskas we'll put on a fresh set of tyres refuel and have you back on the track in no time well, there is I assume oh that's a drive through penalty for Button and one of the Toro Rossos I think oh no was that Barrichello maybe I don't know, but yeah, in fourth place now. And that's after the pit stop, so I think we're in a very, very strong position. Well done. And now all we've got to do, I say all we've got to do, as if it's easy, but all we've got to do is keep it out of the barriers. We might win this race. Well, there we go. We retake the lead of this Grand Prix. We were four and a half seconds ahead of Jensen Button. After the first sector of the last lap, we are now... I'm saying more than ten seconds. I don't believe that. Unless he's crashed at Raskas again, has he? Well, it's Timo Glock in third place. This is uh, going to be quite the order. 
Shake up. No, 3.2 seconds is the gap. Timo Glock is about 11.6 seconds behind. Okay. Right, we have got two laps to go after this one. Starting to get nervy. Right, here we are then. Oh, on to the final lap. Goodness me. What has happened there? We... We took a bit too much curb in the Sandavon and we have lost our front wing, so we are going to have to crawl it back. Are we going to be able to hold off? Uh, well, Jensen Button is, is not the car behind us anymore. It's Timo Glock. Is that Glock? It is Glock. <laughs> Rubens Barrichello in third place, championship leader, of course. Don't know what's happened to uh, Jensen and why he's so slow, but we're literally... Having to crawl around here. And Glock might well reach us. It's a little bit like Hamilton at Silverstone in 2020. Oh, no. We lose the back end. This is a disaster. There's Glock. Oh, well, we're just about in front of him for now. Damn it, no, no, Glock's through. Glock's gonna win. This is a disaster. Just a slight lapse in concentration. Oh, we're not gonna throw away another podium, are we? In the Rascas. Dear me, nearly spun it round. There's Rubens Barrichello. He's waiting to pounce over the line, but it's Timo Glock who wins here in Monaco for Toyota. What a result for him. But we come over the line in second, and it looks like Trulli is fourth for Toyota. That is an incredible result for them. Sebastian Vettel has a penalty button, finishes seventh. Suthill finishes sixth for Force India. Double points finish for Force India. Kazuki Nagajima finishes fifth. Felipe Massa over the line in eighth. This is ridiculous. What a, what a crazy race. I said it would be, because the AI were definitely going to crash into the barriers and and all of that but Weber and Vettel both out of the points Bordet finishes 16th PK was the only non-finisher in the end um, but yeah still haven't seen Hamilton Kovalainen's over the line Raikkonen and I think Hamilton is going to be the last man over the line let's let's see still waiting for him to come over I think yeah, we must have nearly lapped Lewis Hamilton. Maybe we would have had. We had a clean final lap. There you go, 110 seconds behind uh, Timo Glock, who wins it. <laughs> oh, I can't believe we didn't win that. Um, but second place, it's our first podium in Formula One. Takes us up to sixth in the championship. Barrichello opens out his lead to 12 points over Mark Webber. Lots of his championship rivals not doing particularly well today. Trulli up to 7th. Glock up to ninth. Very good uh, for Timo Glock. His first points of the season. Nakajima gets his first points. Suttil gets his first points. And we remain in 6th place in the championship. McLaren go behind us. I said earlier this episode, I don't think we will uh, be able to compete with McLaren. Toyota have jumped up to fourth. They're just three points behind Williams, but the two leaders at the top there, Braun GP and Red Bull, running away with it. Well, what an unbelievable, unbelievable race. I, I genuinely thought we were going to win it there. Um, we should have won it. But just too hot into turn one. Uh, damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Never mind. Um, we have got, I believe, the Turkish Grand Prix next time out. Always enjoy the Turkish Grand Prix. Obviously, a, a track that's not on the calendar anymore, sadly. But uh, looking forward to it nonetheless. Let's, uh, let's see how we get on next time out. If you have enjoyed that, then give it a massive a thumbs up down below. Let me know what you think. Our two uh, races video, the way that you want to see it going forward. Um, subscribe for plenty more F1 content and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and goodbye.